Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Mike and I'm back in After Effects here. And today I'm gonna to be talking about how I sort of color grade my renders from Blender. I like to do this in After Effects. You could do this in DaVinci Resolve. Most of the things are gonna be fairly similar. So the first thing I do kind of even before I even enter After Effects is I render everything in 32-bit EXR. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me way more dynamic range to play with in terms of the overbright areas as well as in the shadows. So in my project settings here, I'm using 32-bit float, um, no color space, and 2.2 gamma. First things first is I like to look at the overbright parts. And in this scene, there really aren't many that jump out at me. The first one I see is like kind of here, and then there might be some on this. Um, so the first thing that I do generally, if nothing's obvious, is I search for an overbrightness and I drop that onto an adjustment layer on top. And yeah, so I can see that this part is a bit over bright. It's outside of our, our 8-bit 100 nit sort of container here. So I'm gonna open up one that's like way over bright and it's this one. So if I turn on the over brightness, you can see here that the entire sky is completely overblown. And you know, for some shots that is completely reasonable. So depending on your exposure and, and the detail that you wanna show, it's reasonable that the sky might be completely blown out like this. However, if I add this curves adjustment and you can see here that I basically just lowered, lowered the brightness down, you can see that there's all this detail in the sky that's baked into that EXR that we're actually losing. So I wanna pull a little bit of that out. I still want it to be highly exposed. It's of course the, the, the sky. So um, I went ahead and added another curves adjustment here and I just added a bit of a of an off ramp here at the very top. And what that does is it gives me some of that detail back in the sky. While also if I toggle this back and forth, it doesn't really do much to the rest of my scene. Um, but generally I do like to increase the brightness just a little bit. And you could see that sort of reflected here. With the over brightness on, you could sort of see that there are still some overexposed areas. And you know you could adjust this to your heart's content. I wouldn't go too overboard because if you go too overboard, then this guy just sort of turns gray and it loses even more detail. So I definitely leave a few overexposed spots in the sky and that looks pretty good. Okay, so next up I like to add my Lumetri color. So I'm gonna drop this after the curves but before the over brightness just so I can see what my modifications do in terms of brightness. Generally, I'm not gonna add too much brightness if anything, so it usually could just be turned off. But um, there's really just a few things that I change in this Lumetri color and I have run into a few sort of bugs. So please bear with me here if this doesn't go perfectly. But the first thing I do is I go under creative and I'm basically looking for a particular look that suits my scene. So for me, I'm looking for something cooler. I'm looking for something that's a little bit more like 80s, 90s military type film. So I'm thinking like, Full Metal Jacket and stuff like that. So um, I just bounce between a few of these. And this one actually right off the bat is sort of meeting my needs. So it's generally darkening the scene and it's bringing out a little bit of that like blue tint to it. So I actually really like what it did to the shadows here. And when I make this invisible and bring it back, you can see that it just adds a lot more character to the shot with just adding a simple creative look to to the scene. You can adjust the intensity. I usually leave it at like, let's say 50, maybe 75, depending on which one I use. And then from that point, I noticed that a lot of these looks, especially the ones that increase contrast, really jack up the, the saturation too. Um, I don't know if it's like intentional or not, but like this looks extremely saturated. So what I usually do is I come down to the saturation. I set it to like 90 or even sometimes 80. Um, and I think that that kind of like brings it a little bit back down to earth and gives it a, a little bit more of a washed out look, but also something that's a little bit more authentic and filmic looking in my opinion. Um, the next thing I do here is I add a slight amount of vignette. So I do maybe minus 0.2 just to kind of focus the eye just a little bit more into the center of the composition. And then Again, this generally makes it a little bit darker. So I'll sometimes increase the brightness a bit there. And then also in these shadows, um, if I open up this Lumetri scopes, you'll see that we're really hitting 
rock bottom in terms of zero black level in some areas. And so I'll add a, just a slight uplift in the blacks. And that again adds to a little bit of that like washed out filmic look. So the general rule of thumb for getting a quote filmic look is to be between um, 10 and 90. So if this is, let's say brightness, candelas, um, you don't want your black to be 100% black. You really want it to be about 10% black and you don't want your brights to be 100% bright. You want them to be like around 90. I find though that trying to get it up to that 10% black, I find washes it out just a little bit too much. But for you, this might be kind of the filmic look that you're looking for. And you could, of course, do this as well via the um, faded film, which will bring up that black a little bit. But I like to kind of adjust a little bit more by hand myself. So once I get the color that I like, which I do like that, I'm going to add a grain. So I'm just going to look for add add grain and I'm going to again put it just before the over brightness and there's a few things that I like to change in here but it's pretty simple and pretty self-explanatory so first thing viewing mode I set this to final output um, just because looking at it in a little box grain acts differently on bright areas and dark areas so I like to be able to see the entire image and let's find a good scene that I think the film grain would be most um, apparent. So here's a good one. So for my preset, I always pick one of these presets. I don't leave it on none. The none is very like blobby in my opinion. Um, I like these Kodak Vision ones, 200T, 250D, and 320T. I think that these offer really, really um, nice fine grain um, detail. And the next thing you'll notice is that it's applying this film grain sort of evenly across the entire screen, which isn't really the way film works. So under application, you want to change this to add from add to film. And this is going to reduce the amount of grain a bit in the brighter areas and leaving it in the darker areas. So you can see that there's still a good amount of film grain, but it's not quite as like evenly distributed across the scene. And some of these will show it more so than others, um, but generally you're going to get a little bit more film grain in those darker areas. So... Also, this is really annoying, but when you change some of these settings, this blend mode sometimes flips back to add and it's really annoying. So last thing I like to change here is the color. So I'll drop down the color and I like to do monochrome, mono, monochromatic. Um, I think that the, that the grain just looks a little bit more natural in my opinion. Um, but, and also it kind of like numbs it a little bit, which I think is important. So this is the layers, the or this is the, the layout that I use to add a sort of filmic look to my images. And this isn't exclusive to 3D renders. So in this motion graphics template, let's see, I'm gonna drag an image in here. This is an image from a recent video that I worked on on Real Engineering. And this looks fine, I mean, it. It's not anything to write home about. So when I was looking at this shot, I was like, how can I improve this and make everything just pop a little bit more? And I thought back, okay, well, why don't I try to add some of these, these filmic looks to uh, motion graphics? So I actually have a few on here, Lumetri Color and Add Grain. And when you turn that on, you could see that it instantly adds a lot more character to the shot. So again, you're getting that film grain, but also the color tonality of the entire shot sort of shifts a little bit and you know with it on with it off I think that with it on adds just a little bit more character so if you just need something just to layer on top of your animation um, just to make things pop a little bit more or just change the look and feel of it feel free to come on in here and browse through some of these these looks until you find something that works for you so anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this video um, if you did, leave a like. Let me know in the comments if there's other things that you would like to see in After Effects Blender or Cinema 4D. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.